March is Women's History Month, and some of the nation's most influential women were Hoosiers from right here in 21 countries. Yeah, tonight we head to a museum for a lesson on the women of Wabash. <laughs> to writing to paving the way in education. The Wabash County Historical Museum archivist T.J. Honeycutt has a list of the area's most notable women. Up first, the White Rose of Miami. Frances Slocum was a child who was abducted in Pennsylvania by the Lenape and then she ended up marrying into the Miami. Their union would play a critical role in the longevity of Native Americans in Northeast Indiana. When the Indian Removal Act was put through Congress, as a result of her having actually been white, it protected her family in the Miami and the rest of the tribe. Crystal Gales was a local transplant. Her family actually moved here for work when she was four years old. She was the youngest daughter of a very large family. Crystal Gale started performing in school, then bars, and soon after, state fairs. It only took one album before, well, the rest is history. When she turned 18, she cut a record and put it forward and ended up in immediate superstardom. Gail made a return to Wabash in 2020 to celebrate the reopening of the newly renovated Eagles Theater. Margie Stewart was a local girl who ended up going to college in IU, taking some modeling work there for Sears Catalog. Then the Second World War broke out. The U.S. government looking to change the widespread reputation of the pinup girl among ranks discovered Margie and chose her to be the Army's new face. There were 98 million posters of her printed. Uh, she also did a lot of military training videos in Hollywood. So she was very well known at the time and was a major part of the United States World War II uh, war effort. She too kept her Wabash ties, visiting in 2008, four years before her death. Jean Stratton Porter was actually born in Lagro, a little bit east of Wabash. Uh, and she was very involved with nature photography and naturalism. The nature photographer soon became an author, adapting local experiences to her works, which would be read across the country. And it didn't stop there. Uh, she actually was an early adopter of transitioning books into movies and was one of the first women owners of a film production company where she was turning her own books into movies. And lastly, so Adelaide Steele Baylor was a local lady who ended up rising to the rank of superintendent, was the first woman to ever do so in the state of Indiana. Her work to help Hoosiers soon expanded to students across the nation. And she was selected by President Wilson to head a commission that uh, essentially created home economics and what it would be. and put it in every school in the United States. Women are often overlooked, and especially in a small county, our history in general is usually overlooked. And it, it's a very rewarding experience to be an advocate for that history and to also show what people from a county like this can do on a national level. Reporting in 21 Country, I'm Krista Miller. Hey, I remember seeing Crystal Gale at the Grand Ole mm -hmm. Opry down in Nashville. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you'd like to visit the Wabash County Historical Museum to see the women of Wabash and other exhibits they have there, we put their address and their hours of operation on our website, WPTA21.com.